Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our worship service today. We see the candle is lit, reminding us that Christ is the light of the world and Christ is with us in this space. And so let us begin this day by rejoicing. The Lord has done such wonderful things for us. Let us be glad. The day before us is uncertain. We know not what we will encounter on our way. Wherever we go, we go forth as people of the living God and we go forth to touch the lives of all with his healing touch. So let us begin this day with rejoicing and go into the world with gladness. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to this sanctuary, this house, this home, Holy Christ. Let us receive you with lavish welcome. You are the promise of a new life and we pour out our praise to you. Fill this place with your spirit, the sound of wind, the warmth of flame, the scent of perfume, and fill our hearts with your compassion, not just in this time and place, but in all times and in all places, so that as we celebrate the great things that you have done for us, we may also embody the love that you give to all. Amen. So let us stay seated, because when we stay seated, we can leave our masks off, and let us sing our, song, our first song, Tell Out My Soul. And the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us share God's peace with one another.
Let us come before God with our prayers of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, our thoughts and our deeds too often do not reflect the grace that you show to us. Our speech and our actions too often do not proclaim your salvation. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, Lord, for the sins that we bear both as individuals and as your church. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. us. Our teacher, let us see again. Give us the courage to take heart in your grace. Give us the strength to get up. Give us the wisdom to hear your calling. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the best of all, for when we are in turmoil, God brings us peace. When we're in despair, God brings us hope. When we are lost, God guides us. And when we confess our sin, God forgives. In Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. So let us sing once again. Let the weak say, I am strong.
So a story for those who are young and who are young at heart. Soon we're going to listen to a story from the Bible about a man called Bartimaeus. And you see, Bartimaeus was blind. And in the time of, of 2,000 years ago, in the time of Jesus, people who were blind were usually unable to work. And so Bartimaeus earned money to buy food by begging on the side of the road, hoping that the compassion and the generosity of strangers would, would help as they passed by. They might throw him some, some coins. And he did this on the outskirts of town, in a town named Jericho. Bartimaeus carried with him at all times a cloak. It was a bit like a, a blanket. Probably not as big as this blanket, but a bit like a blanket. He would have it in front of him as he was sitting on the, the side of the road to catch coins that people would throw at him. He would also, in the cold, he would wrap it around himself to keep warm. And also, when it rained, he might use it to help him stay dry, keep the rain off. For Bartimaeus, his cloak was probably his only possession, but also it was his most important possession. But when Bartimaeus met Jesus, who was passing through town, Bartimaeus did something that was amazing. So, we're going to hear a story that Helen is going to read for us from Mark's Gospel. And I reckon, just listen to the story and see what Bartimaeus did when he met Jesus. And then afterwards, you may meet somebody who says he saw the whole thing. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. This morning's reading comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, did you see Jesus? He was in town yesterday. You know, Jesus, the teacher from Nazareth, the one who was coming to town. That's right, some people say that he was able to cure people, to, to restore people to, to their sight and to heal those who are lame. Well, they were the rumours anyway. Some even said that he was able to cast out demons and even to forgive sin. Give sin, only God can forgive sin. Are they saying that, that Jesus is from God? I remember thinking that maybe he could be the Messiah, but I wasn't so sure. I wanted to see, I remember, I wanted to see him firsthand to make a decision about that myself, to decide whether he could be or not. But for the last few weeks, we'd heard stories that he was heading in this direction that he was coming down from the north on the way, seems like, to Jerusalem. 
And this town is just one more town on the way. But didn't he know the dangers that he was facing? I mean, the rumours are that the Pharisees were not happy with him. Even the Jewish council in, in Jerusalem, the Sanhedrin, even they didn't like Jesus and they probably wanted to silence him. He challenged their authority. He challenged their teachings about God. Didn't Jesus know the dangers? I mean, the rumours were here. They spread like wildfire. Surely he would have heard them. But yet, even though he might have heard the danger that he was facing, the peril that awaited him, he still kept coming. I got up in the morning eager to try and find a spot where I could see Jesus. But when I got to the north side of town, there were people everywhere. It seemed that everyone wanted to come and see Jesus. So many people, there might have been hundreds, maybe even thousands of people there waiting waiting on the side of the road. I just could not get a good vantage point. I considered climbing a tree, but I thought, no, no self-respecting Jew would, true, would do that. Also, I may fall out of the tree. And so instead, I went to the Jerusalem road that led out of town and waited for him to leave. And he wasn't in the, in the city for long when Jesus came, followed by his disciples and followed by everybody else in the city. And I finally got a chance to have a good look at him. At first glance, he just seemed like an ordinary man. I wondered what all the fuss was about. But then I took a closer look. He seemed to be at peace, like this amazing serenity about him. Not like his disciples who seemed annoyed by all the people who were pressing in on him. But Jesus had this peace about him, this calmness, and he was looking at everybody with such care and such love. And then he looked at me. And as our eyes met, even just for that instant, I could see that he loved me. That he accepted me. And some of the peace that I'm sure he was feeling descended on me as well. Never felt that way in my entire life. And in that moment, I just knew that I loved him in return. But then there was a noise. And that supernatural peace left me in an instant. And, and I turned with annoyance towards the source of the noise. And it was Bartimaeus. You know the blind beggar who sits out here on the side of the road collecting coins, begging for money and for scraps of food? How did he know who Jesus was? He's calling out to him. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, he would call out. How did he even know who Jesus was? Surely he hadn't heard about him. Bartimaeus, who's been blind since childhood, so the stories go probably from some sin that he committed, or maybe it was a sin of his father Timaeus, or, or maybe his mother or other members of his family, I don't know. But, but there he was, calling as loud as he could for Jesus to get his attention. I remember hearing voices telling him to shut up. I even added my voice to the calls for him to be quiet, for him distracting us from from looking at Jesus, from seeing him. But he kept calling louder and louder until finally Jesus stopped and he turned to face the source of the noise. But instead of rebuking him, Jesus called for him to come over. Some closest to Bartimaeus told him that Jesus is calling for him and sure enough he got up leaving his cloak behind and started to stumble his way towards Jesus. Most of us gave him a clear birth for fear of the sin that he might have held contaminating us. But, but there were others who were, who were more friendly and had more compassion and they helped him along the way until there he was standing in front of Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? 
And Bartimaeus said, let me see again. To which Jesus said, your faith has made you well. It was amazing. I've never seen anything like it. There were gasps from people in the crowd as they witnessed what had happened. You could tell the very moment that Bartimaeus went from not being able to see to being able to see everything. He looked around at us. He had this glimmer in his eyes as the joy of what he was experiencing filled him. At that, Jesus turned and continued on his way with his disciples. And Bartimaeus, not even going back to get his cloak and the money that it contained, not that it was much, he left it behind and began following Jesus. You know, the stories that I'd heard before are true. Jesus is able to heal. He made Bartimaeus see again. But maybe those other stories about him are true as well, that he is able to cast out demons, that he is able to forgive sin. And if that's the case, then Bartimaeus, then, then, then Jesus must be from God. That, that Jesus must be the Messiah, the one promised in our scriptures that God would send to free us. And if that's the case, then who was I to try and stop Bartimaeus from going to see him? And the shame of my actions has sat with me ever since. Who am I to say who is worthy to approach Jesus or not? Bartimaeus had faith, had faith in who Jesus was. Why couldn't I? Bartimaeus was able to leave everything behind to follow him. And yet I tried to stop him from seeing Jesus. Who am I to say who is worthy and who is not? I mean, the Pharisees do that. The Pharisees proclaim who is worthy and who is unworthy of God. Am I like a Pharisee? Oh, I hope not. But then I remember the look that Jesus gave me. The look of love and acceptance. The look of grace. It was a feeling that I've never felt in my life. And so maybe if Jesus is able to accept me for who I am and for what I've done, then maybe he's able to forgive me as well. Like Bartimaeus, I need to have faith. I need to trust in who Jesus is. I need to trust that I am accepted as we all are by Jesus. So what now? Well, I've been changed by my encounter with Jesus. I can't go back to the old ways. Only the new ways are here. This new knowledge of being accepted and loved. And so I'm going to leave all that I have behind. And I'm going to follow him. I'm going to try and catch up with his followers as they go to Jerusalem. I'm going to try and learn from him to see what he what he does to hear his teachings to learn how to love the way that Jesus loves yes there are dangers in Jerusalem I understand that there are powers there in Jerusalem and, and in the whole world who want to silence Jesus because they are threatened by him but regardless of that, I need to leave everything behind and follow him. And how about you? Have you been changed by your encounter with Jesus? Are you willing to leave 
everything behind to follow him? This wouldn't be awesome if we could all follow and go on this journey together. Amen. Freely we have received. Let us freely give our free will offering for the Lord. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who came to show us how to be and how to live and how to love, to be your people. And so, Lord God, we give all that we have, all of our resources and money, we turn it to you, all of our lives, we give to you. And so, Lord God, use the gifts that we have, the gifts that we give, because they are yours. Help us to follow you in all that we do. Thank you, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. And Jeff, what are we noticing today? Next uh, Sunday is the last Sunday of the month, and so we are again, uh, again having our cafe church uh, on the veranda at five o'clock uh, next Sunday, and um, 
the, the weather's warming up and uh, we might have, uh, the, the, uh, the rain might have passed over by, by then. We've been having some afternoon storms of late, but uh, next week's looking good. So um, next Sunday at five o'clock, uh, the, the, we, we share a time of family worship together. Uh, there's opportunity for converse, good conversation and um, also uh, we share a meal together. Um, I think I've put in Centenary Life that it's going to be sausages on, uh, on the roll again uh, as, like last month, but actually that's changed to hamburgers. So it'd be hamburgers with all the trimmings, um, $5 per person, and um, we really look forward to that. The topic of our conversation next Sunday is going to be participating together in Christian community. So we want to have that conversation thinking about, uh, you know, from uh, for a young family, what does it mean for a young family to participate in Christian community um, uh, here at Centenary? What does it mean for somebody who's been here for many, many years? What does it mean uh, to you to participate in Christian community? What, is it, what does it mean for us to participate together in uh, the life of the church? So that's the, sort of the, uh, the essence of our conversation uh, next Sunday and uh, we'd love as many as possible uh, to join us for that. If you think you might like to join us, then um, please pop your name on the list on the veranda there this morning um, or next Sunday morning, just so that uh, we've got an idea for catering. That would be great. You'll notice as you go outside the church this morning that um, the red bags are back again this year. Wesley Mission uh, Red Bag Appeal is, has just been launched uh, for this year. So this is an opportunity to, to grab a bag. There's a shopping list inside. Uh, there's uh, an opportunity to, um, to buy uh, non-perishable foods uh, that will go towards um, many, many families who will struggle uh, this Christmas uh, via Wesley Mission Queensland. So it, there's um, about 50 bags there this morning. Uh, we can get more if we need them. Um, if you could grab a bag, you, you can part fill a bag or fill a bag, uh, whatever you feel uh, able to do. And if you could bring those bags back by the 21st of November, uh, that would be wonderful. And don't forget our book fest is um, just uh, two weeks away, Saturday the 6th of November. Um, it'll be from 8 o'clock now till 1 o'clock. And um, if you've got heaps of books that you still haven't got along to the church yet, then um, books, CDs, DVDs, jigsaws and table games is what we're looking for. And uh, so an opportunity still next Sunday to bring them along or Friday morning when the craft group's here between 9.30 and 11.30 is fine. Um, if you're watching at home and you have no means to get them here, then uh, let us know. We are happy to, to, to pick them up. Uh, you could always um, contact me or email the office, office at uh, centenaryuca.org.au and we're happy to, uh, to pick those up for you. Also, you might be interested in helping to set up so that's um, going to happen on Friday, Thursday afternoon and evening uh, of next week and also Friday afternoon. Uh, so from 1 o'clock um, on both days, 1 o'clock Thursday next week, Friday next week, uh, through to possibly, could go through to 8 o'clock on Thursday night or, and, or we'd finish at 6 o'clock on, uh, on Friday evening. But if you're able to contribute in some way uh, during that time to helping... Uh, sort and set up for this. It's going to be a great event. Have a chat with Russell after the service today if you think you might like to be able to help uh, with that. Um, also on the day there's going to be, um, I think there's going to be a cake store from the ladies. There's going to be, the, uh, the craft group has a Christmas uh, craft stall and also the, the guys at the um, uh, Kath St Catherine's Anglican Church are going to do a, a sausage sizzle for us uh, on, on the day. Uh, so we look forward to, to all of that. So that's Saturday the 6th of November. You'll see the response on the um, uh, walls there for you. So let us pray. Jesus, son of David, as you once heard the cry of blind Bartimaeus, hear the cries of your people today. 
We pray for the peoples of the world, for harmony, justice and peace, for leaders of tribes and nations, for those who govern or administer the law, for victims of corruption, incompetence or aggression. When we are blind to these injustices, we inflict on others, when we fail to recognise exploitation and oppression. Jesus, son of David, let us see again. We pray for this land and its people, for tolerance, compassion and integrity, for all involved in the process of reconciliation, for all who are marginalised, unheard or forgotten. When we are blind to discrimination and prejudice, when we lack the wisdom, the vision to forge a common future, Jesus, son of David, let us see again. We pray for the church, for its ministry and mission in the world, for leaders of churches, for all who bring your good news to others, for the clergy and the people of this parish. When we are blind to your promises and your purpose, when we have too little faith in your power, Jesus, son of David, let us see again. We pray for our community, for our families, for our neighbours and friends, for those who are unemployed, for those who are overworked, for the homeless, the hungry and those without hope. When we are blind to the plight of the poor, when we are unaware of our selfishness and greed, Jesus, son of David, let us see again. We pray for all in need, for the comfort, for the sad and the relief, for the suffering, for the bereaved, the lonely and those who have lost their sight, for the sick and dying and for all who care for them. When we are blind to the distress of those around us, when we ignore our own or others' needs, Jesus, son of David, let us see again. We remember your faithful people of every age and those dear to us whom we now recall. May we, like them, place our trust in you, receive your healing word and follow in your way, that we may come into your presence and see the radiance of your glory. Jesus, son of David, let us see again. And please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Marcia. So let us sing once again, Everlasting God.
stand, everybody. Let's stand. With God, all things are possible. May you carry that confidence into your daily life and work as you walk in Christ's footsteps, guided by God's hand. We go in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us say to one another the Mispah benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee, whilst we're absent one from the other. Amen.